welcome to Glastonbury Abbey. Glastonbury Abbey has had powerful royal connections throughout its long history. From the mythological beginnings of King Arviragus granting <laughs> land to Joseph of Arimathea to Henry VIII and the tragic dissolution. Today, on this special holiday Monday with Dr. Tim Hopkinson Ball of Glastonbury Antiquarian Society, we are going to commemorate, to celebrate our greatest son, Dunstan, whose legacy has lived on through to the present day in the very form of the coronation ceremony itself and the King Edgar that he crowned, who chose to be buried here. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax omnibus bonae volatatis. Lords, ladies, and gentlemen, I bid you welcome to the Abbey of St. Mary of Glastonbury, a most ancient and royal foundation, to celebrate the coronation of His Most Britannic Majesty, King Charles III. The earth on which we now stand has been called both Mater Sanctorum and Tumulus Sanctorum, both mother and tomb of saints. And of these saints, which include in their number David, Patrick and Gildas, Indract and Benignus, Hild, Bede and Aidan, Athelswyther and Basilius, none is greater than Dunstan. Born at Boltonsborough, Dunstan rose to become abbot of this ancient fane before being appointed Bishop of Worcester, London, and finally Archbishop of Canterbury. Closely involved with a number of Saxon kings, it was Dunstan in the 10th century that spearheaded the revitalization of spirituality in this realm. It was Dunstan's Glastonbury, which stood as the spiritual exemplar, the Civitas Dei, the New Jerusalem, a shining beacon which illumined the darkest corners of these Britannic Isles. So it was that at Pentecost, in the year 973, that King Edgar the Peaceable convoked all the archbishops and bishops, all great abbots and religious abbesses, all dukes, prefects and judges, and all who claimed to rank and dignity from east to west and north to south to assemble in the city of Bath. There they gathered that the most reverent bishops might bless anoint and consecrate Edgar by Christ's lead. On entering the Abbey Church of Bath, Edgar proceeded to the high altar, where he knelt before St Dunstan, who intoned the Te Deum. Then the king swore the coronation oath to maintain peace, administer justice, and exercise equity and mercy. Then Edgar was anointed by Dunstan with the Holy Chrism, a fragrant mixture of oil and balsam, signalling the sacred moment of rebirth, Edgar's sacral kingship, and the apogee of his reign. The anointing complete, Dunstan then crowned Edgar with a circlet of finest gold, a crown of glory and righteousness. Edgar then rose, king and imperator of Albion. And the people cried out, as with one voice, God save the king, long live the king, may the king live forever. This coronation ceremony, created by Glastonbury St Dunstan, enshrined the vision of the English monarchy, which has 
lasted over a thousand years and persists to this very day. We honour, therefore, not just our new king, but Glastonbury's profound and enduring royal connections. Behind you, in the choir of the great church, are buried King Edmund I, known as Edmund the Magnificent, and King Edmund II, known as Edmund Ironside, for his valour in war. There too formerly stood the great black marble tomb of the glorious Arthur and his queen Guinevere, while to the south of the Lady Chapel in the old cemetery are buried more ancient kings still, whose names are now perhaps unfamiliar. If the chroniclers are to be believed, these venerable bones include those of Sentwin, King of Wessex, of Cole, Rex and Tonin, better known as Old King Cole, the father of St Helena and the grandfather of the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great. And perhaps, too, the bones of Averagus, the king who first gave the twelve hides of Glaston to St Joseph of Arimathea. And at this very spot where I now stand, the body of King Edgar was eventually interred in a chapel that bore his name. And where you stand, the great shrine to Dunstan himself stood, honouring Glastonbury's greatest son, a man whom Abbot Richard Beer rightly called our patron saint. So, as you walk these hallowed grounds, you tread upon the dust of saints and kings whose stories seem remote. But remember, we are but the living embodiment of the country they created, and it is our duty to hand it safely to our descendants as yet unborn. It is this Glastonbury, then, with a great company that dwelt and dwells here in Avalon, that gave birth to this royal throne of kings, this sceptered isle, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, demi-paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war, this blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England. By that, Rex Corolius Tertius, long live King Charles III. Long live King Charles III. procession, follow the dragon drummers to the marquee. <laughs> 